Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about Edward Kennedy Ellington, also known as Duke Ellington. So I did want to do a little bit of review before we jumped into new stuff. So really quickly, born April 29th, 1899, took piano lessons as early as seven years old, got his nickname Duke from his friends because his mom made sure to make him be around dignified women, dress nicely, have manners, he was a uh, band leader of an orchestra and had a career of 50 years doing so. You see him pretty much every time at the piano for any live performance. He wrote over a thousand compositions. His big band and jazz style actually elevated jazz to become a more traditional music style that we listen to even today. He influenced all kinds of uh, musicians. So let's get started into some more information about him. There he is again at the piano. So again, he had a 50 year career, wrote over a thousand compositions. And the president at the time, uh, Lyndon B. Johnson presented Duke Ellington with the president's gold medal in 1966. And then uh, the other president at the time, later on, Richard M. Nixon presented Duke Ellington with the Medal of Freedom in 1969, a few years later. He's gotten 13 Grammy Awards total, which is pretty awesome, and a Pulitzer Prize. So in Duke Ellington's birthplace, Washington, DC, there's a school called the Duke Ellington School of the Arts. They educate talented students by providing intensive art instruction and very strong academic programs. Duke Ellington passed away May 24th, 1974 of complications from lung cancer and pneumonia, unfortunately, a few weeks before his 75th birthday. At his funeral, he had over 12,000 people attend at the Cathedral of St. John of the Divine and Ella Fitzgerald, a famous jazz musician, summed up the occasion by saying, it is a very sad day, a genius has passed. After Duke passed away, his son Mercer took over leadership of the orchestra, continuing until his own death in 1996. Like Count Basie's orchestra, this quote unquote ghost band continued to release albums for many years. Ghost band just basically means that the band is still going without their main leader, which was Duke Ellington. Even though they technically had his son as the leader, they just called it ghost band. Digital Duke, credited to the Duke Ellington Orchestra, actually won the 1988 Grammy Award for Best Large Jazz Ensemble Album. And Mercer Ellington had been handling all the administrative aspects of his father's business for several decades. And uh, Mercer's children continued uh, a connection with their grandfather's work as well. So it stayed within the family, which is pretty awesome. Many memorials have been dedicated to Duke Ellington in cities from New York and Washington, DC all the way out to out here, LA. So today we're gonna to listen to a song called Mood Indigo. It's one of his many popular tunes. Um, although Irving Mills, which is Jack Mills' brother and publishing partner took credit for the lyrics, a guy named Mitchell Parrish actually claimed those lyrics in a 1987 interview that he had written the lyrics, which is interesting. The tune was composed for a radio broadcast in October of 1930 and was originally titled Dreamy Blues. It was the first tune I ever wrote specifically for microphone transmission, Ellington recalled. The next day, wads of mail came in raving about the new tune, so Irving Mills put lyrics to it. Renamed it Mood Indigo, and it became a jazz standard. Duke Ellington took the traditional front line, which is the trumpet, the trombone, and clarinet, and actually inverted them, which changed the style a little bit. At the time of the first three recordings in 1930, the usual sound of the horns would be the clarinet, which is the highest, the trumpet in the middle, and the trombone at the bottom. But in Mood Indigo, the uh, voices of the trombone right at the top of the instrument's register, which is as high as it goes, and the clarinet at its very lowest. So he kind of made it so that he stretched the range of the instruments and changed up the style of the way that it's typically written for instruments like those. This was unheard of at the time and also created in the studio a so-called mic tone, 
an effect that generated by overtones of the clarinet and the trombone, which was tightly muted as well. We remember what mutes are. We saw that in our last uh, performance that we listened to. The mic tone actually gives the audio illusion or the like a fake sound of the presence of an actual extra voice or an extra instrument. So that extra tone that gets created with these two pitches that come together is called an overtone. And that gives it almost like an extra layer or an extra piece to it, which sounds really cool. So Duke Ellington used this effect in uh, a few things. So in My Solitude in 1932, Dusk in 1940, and many other pieces as well throughout his career. The Ellington Band performed and recorded the song continuously throughout its 50 years, both in its original form and as a vehicle for individual soloists. So let's take a listen to it and see what we think. Now, a little new treatment on uh, a big old favorite of ours. <laughs> Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed that. Alrighty, I'll see you next time.